Okay, well, let's, let's look back. Let's reflect on 2013. How would you assess uh, the season just gone? Well, me personally, uh, you know, obviously our priority, as everyone knows, going into, uh, into last season was, was to try and win the championship in our 150th year. Um, and we nearly achieved that. You know, we finished second. You know, it's disappointment because I think we had an opportunity. You know, going into the game at Scarborough against Durham, you know, we were in pole position uh, to win it. And obviously, to be fair to them, they outplayed us in that game. And, you know, having won that match, uh, they blew the rest of the opposition away, really, following that game. So, you know, I think it's fair to say they won the county championship rather than us losing it. But, um, you know, so there's a tinge of disappointment from my point of view that, that we, did, you know, we, we didn't win it. But the cold light of day to finish second, having been promoted the year before, I think was a, you know, a fantastic achievement. And, you know, some of the cricket we played throughout the summer was um, just like we would want it, you know, really positive, exciting, um, you know, in your face cricket, really. Uh, we dominated teams and, uh, you know, I thought we saw a great development of, of the group during the summer. So, um, you know, on that side of things, really pleased. One day form, I think we'll all agree, was, you know, was disappointing particularly in T20, where we just never got going, really. And, um, you know, that was a big disappointment. YB40, again, you know, we didn't play to our capabilities. We did introduce a few you know, young players into that purposely because, um, you know, I'm sure you'll come on to that in, in, in a little while about the England selections, but we have to bear that in mind. And uh, with so many lads being involved with England now, you know, we do have to look at, at the future and try to progress our young players, which we've got a really nice group of young players at the minute, but we need to, to really try and progress them quickly over the next 12, 18 months. You know, we need, we need the next core, if you like, to be ready to play first team cricket. So that was a great opportunity for us to, to blood them, you know, see how they reacted to first team cricket um, and, and as to whether, you know, um, they were going to be able to hack it at the highest level. So, again, although, you know, uh, results were disappointing. You can't blame the young players for that. I think you know our more experienced players didn't perform at, at that form of the game either. So um, you know our plan is to work hard this winter on on one day cricket again. You know obviously we had different personnel in T20 that we that we had in previous year when we obviously did very well. We were very successful. But I think it's fair to say we didn't we didn't replace the key players um, that we had in 2012 and 2013. You know we missed that. You know, the Millers, Starks and Root, if you like. Andrew Gale only played three games. So we missed, you know, we missed those guys and unfortunately weren't able to replace them. What about yourself, Jason? What are your thoughts, in particular, the four-day cricket? I mean, was that a pivotal moment when we played Durham? That was agonising four days at Scarborough? It was. And, um, you know, we just didn't perform the skills that we'd been doing all season. It was as simple as that. We, we didn't quite get, uh, implement the game plan, um, especially with the ball. I think we just didn't quite get it right. Our lines and our lengths weren't as disciplined as they were uh, leading up to that game. And, you know, full credit to Durham. They, they absolutely capitalised on that. And we played catch up and, and look, they played some wonderful cricket. And, um, you know, you do have to give them credit. Um, but it doesn't, doesn't hide that disappointment, I suppose. Um, but yeah, it was, um, you know, and then Durham obviously just went on and, and played some great cricket from that moment on. Probably gave them a little bit of a momentum. Um, and, and yeah, they just went on and uh, won the championship. And was it about ha how we handled pressure? Was that, was that the difference between the two teams at that particular time? Um, uh, you could put your finger on a number of, uh, number of things. You know, people will argue that it's pressure that makes you uh, not get your skills right. Um, could that have been a reason? Quite possibly. Um, but, uh, you know, it's done now. Um, you know, I think that the way Durham played, um, from that game onwards, I think uh, we would have had a tough time trying to chase them down in any case. Um, so it was full credit to them, but uh, absolutely proud of the lads, the way they, they played the whole season. Uh, they played some pretty ruthless cricket at times um, and it was, it was a pleasure to watch. Do you believe in the adage that you've got to lose one to win one? You, you know, will we learn from it? Will we get stronger this, this coming time? Yeah, I'm not sure if I absolutely believe in the adage you're going to lose one to win one, but I, I certainly believe that we can learn uh, some lessons. There's no doubt about that. I think, you know, just 
just uh, one thing being, you just can't let your foot off the gas, you know, for one moment, one session, you know. Um, we talk about winning every hour, you know, winning every session. And, you know, if you do that, you can win a day's play. I mean, you know, string together a few days' plays. If you're on top, chances are you're going to be in a really good position to get maximum points. So that's how we try to play our game. And by and large, we did that last season. I think it just showed, you know, how well you have to play throughout the whole season to win the competition. You know, if you, you think back, we had probably two poor games all season in the championship. You know, the first one against Sussex, where obviously we got, you know, we got beat by an innings and then we weren't quite as our best at Scarborough. But other than that, um, you know, we were, we were very good throughout the season. So two poor games and we finished second. So, you know, I think it just shows that you have to be, you know, on your game all the time. Yeah, correct. Which players impress you? In, in championship cricket, yeah, yeah. look, I think, you know, the, the championship side was quite settled. So there was contributions um, throughout with bat and ball. I mean, I think we had eight different centurions uh, in championship cricket. We had, um, you know, all our frontline bowlers took over 30 uh, wickets. All, all the frontline seamers took over 35 wickets. And, and I think Adil Rashid got, uh, got 30 wickets. So that's a real pleasing effort. That's a, that shows a lot of consistency. Um, you know, I suppose you, know, you can single out a number of players. Obviously, Gary Balance had a wonderful season, uh, scoring uh, well over a thousand runs. I thought Andrew Gale, after having a, a season that uh, in 2012 that you know wasn't as the standards that you know he set him, sets himself, uh, he was a bit disappointed with his return. For him to come out in 2013 and, and play the way he did and get a thousand run season, I think it's his first thousand run season, as a testament to his hard work. Um, and his efforts throughout um, the winter and then preparing himself throughout the summer. Um, so it was really pleasing. Adil Rashid, bat and ball, um, incredibly impressive and, and probably the most consistent he's been for a while uh, in his cricket. So, um, but look, I've singled out a couple of names there, but you know, it'd be, you know, I, I could name another four lads or five lads no, without any problem at all. Um, as I mentioned, the seam attack was excellent. Um, you know, and young lads came in and took opportunities. Like Alex Lees came in, played a few games, and, and performed exceptionally well. Um, so, look, we, you know, it was a good, season, really good season. You took. Uh, go on, sorry. No, I was just going to say. I think you know, the pleasing thing from my point of view is how we played as a team. You know that everyone contributed at, at various times, as, as Dizzy said. But you know, the spirit within the the group of players was was excellent, and the work ethic. You know, they worked ever so hard, you know, in, in everything they did, their fitness maintenance, their practice, you know, um, they left no stone unturned. So as long as we can keep that mentality, um, you know, I'm, I'm confident we can keep improving. I have to mention, you know, the one day for me alluded to it, that it was disappointing, but, but where did it go wrong for us? Well, I mean, T20, um, you know, we lost the first three games when we potentially we're in positions to win going into the final few overs and then one, one expensive over kind of tipped the, tipped the game against us. So you lose first three. You know, T20 is a big game of momentum and, and you, you know, you're battling from that period, you know, because what you can't have in 2020 cricket is doubt. Mm. And, you know, when you lose games, it creates doubt. You know, are we doing the right things? What should we, should we be changing our game plans, you know? Are we executing our skills properly? It creates doubt losing. And, and you know, once you've got doubt in T20, you, you, you're stuffed really because you haven't got time to, to worry about. You've got to get out there and be instinctive and be positive and be really uh, confident in, in what you're doing. And I think, you know, we, losing those first three games made it really tough. Yeah, it certainly did. And, and just to jump on that point, I, I think with the bowling, we were probably a little bit inconsistent, especially with our death bowling. Just didn't quite get it right. Martin mentioned, you know, there were a few games where, you know, we had one or two very expensive overs, um, especially at the end of the end of the innings, and that, and that can hurt you. But our average score was 130 in the C20, and you're not winning many games when you're scoring six and a half and over in a 20 over game. Um, you know, it's not back in the 70s or 80s when uh, in 50 over career teams four and over was a, was a was a good score. Um, so we certainly learned from that. We realised that we our batting wasn't up to scratch and the lads put their hands up so that they needed to do better. Um, and I think our fielding efforts, you know, while the effort was there, uh, we just didn't quite get it right. And, um, 
you know, again, we, we can be a little bit better at that, uh, be just a little bit more disciplined and with every aspect of our fielding. And, you know, I'm a big believer in fielding drives your energy levels in 2020 cricket. And, uh, you know, your goal should be to put on a show and show everyone how good you are in the field. And if you can set those really high standards in the field, it can, uh, it can go on to you know, affect your batting and your, and your bowling in a positive way. What do you what do you what do you say when the mem when some of the members were, were suggesting that um, we we couldn't care less about one day cricket and we threw all our eggs into one basket to try and win the championship in our hundred and fiftieth year? What's your thoughts when, when comments like that well, are being made? I think you know to say we we couldn't care less is is obviously quite ridiculous, really, because of course we could. You know we we want to win every game we can. Um, so you know we we went out to try and get to finals day in T Twenty cricket. You know because we you know we were all delighted to be down at Cardiff. You know, last year, and we wanted we wanted that again, didn't we? You know, I mean, you know, the players loved it. It's a great experience. Um, so we went out to try and win the T20 competition. We didn't play well enough. Is the bottom line? Uh, YB40. Yet yeah, it was you know an opportunity where we particularly rested the the main championship seamers from from YB40. So that was an absolute definite policy. Um, but I don't think anybody could really blame us for doing that. Um, because obviously we came second, we nearly won the championship on the back of that. So, you know, um, we would have expected the lads who played to have performed better in YB40. You know, that, that's our disappointment that, that the teams that we put out didn't perform better because we, we, we felt that we were, you know, capable of doing much, much better than what we did. And it came down to, you know, kind of the things that we talked about in T20s you know, the bowling at the front and at the end of an innings wasn't as, as good as it could have been. And our batting again, uh, you know, we didn't bat well enough as a team to win games. Uh, you know, it really is as simple as that. So it wasn't a case of us not caring. Um, but as I said at the start of the interview, we also felt that we needed to blood a few young players because of the reasons I've said. And that worked really well, I thought. You know, I thought we gained a lot from that. You know, and hopefully that will pay us dividends you know, down the line, the fact that the, the lads have been introduced into, into first-team cricket. Um, and as I said, you can't blame the young players for us not, not winning games in that competition. You know, there were plenty of players you know, with seniority that didn't perform well enough. Yeah, and, and further that comment, I, I think the big difference between championship cricket and the limited overs cricket that we played last year was... We talked about consistency through the batting lineup in the championship side. We had a lot of contributions, and we had a lot of contributions with the ball. You know, we weren't relying on one or two players, and in the end, what what as it turned out, we were relying on one or two players in the T20 side and the 40 over side. And you can't do that; uh, it's just not going to work. Um, but yeah, as Martin said, the giving some opportunities to some young players, it's it's going to be of immense benefit. We, we could see the benefit. Um, with those lads, just being being around the lads um, at training, uh, preparing for games. Um, I mean, the game at obvious. Scarborough, where Matthew Fisher, obviously, yeah. was the youngest mm. ever debutant for Yorkshire, made his debut. Uh, we had a young team there, and it was a fantastic game of cricket. We nearly, you know, we nearly won that game with with these kids in, and they, you know, they were a breath of fresh air, weren't they? I mean, we said, didn't we? You know, it was fantastic to be part of that energy. You know, and the, and the senior players said how much energy the young players had given, yeah, you know, right. to the group. So, you know, these are the hidden benefits that, mm. that you don't necessarily see. Um, and, and I know in, the, in, that, in that particular game um, against Leicester at Scarborough, I mean, we had in the last three overs trying to defend a total against a full-strength Leicestershire side. Two of the last three overs were bowled by a 17-year-old, and a 15 year old in a pressure situation. I mean, you can't, you can do five years of net training and you can't replicate that situation. You know, a crowd around, points are up, up for stake, um, you know, in a game. It's absolutely brilliant. And it is going to pay us back down the track. There's no question of that. And there's another occasion that stands out in my memory, Diz, was um, Ben Code at uh, Bristol against Gloucester in the, yeah, in the YB40 absolutely. game where. Um, he took a bit of stick in his first three three overs, I think it was. Michael Klinger yeah. played really Klinger, well. Klinger, who was in great form at the time, took him down a bit for his first three overs. But the the 
the beauty was when he came back for his second spell, he absolutely nailed it, didn't he? Yeah. And his next four overs went for about 15, 16, having gone for about 25 in his first three. So that, for, that tells us that that lad's got character, mm. you know, that he, he was able to come back from a difficult first spell and, and do well in his second spell. And they're the kind of things that we were looking to learn, weren't we, yeah, during that period. So just to put closure on 2013 and as we look ahead to, to the new season, one day cricket is a priority for this club. Yeah, it absolutely is. You know, as we said, you know, championship cricket, you, you ask any member of Yorkshire County Cricket Club and they, they will tell you county championship cricket is the most important. So you can't have your cake and eat it. You know, we can't have some people saying, well, you don't care about one day cricket because you're putting all your eggs in the championship basket. Yorkshire members say county championship cricket is the most important thing to them. You know, that is fact. Um, but from our point of view and the club's point of view, we want to compete on all fronts. What we've got to do within the fixture list is manage the squad. You know, and that's, that's what you tried to do last year, was manage the squad to try and get results throughout the whole three competitions. And that's what we'll continue to do. We want to win games. We're not, we're not turning up on a match day not wanting to win. It's not what we're about.